Thank you for downloading the Wado Radio Podcast. If you love what you're hearing, leave a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear your feedback, and it helps expose others to the show. Thank you, and God bless. This podcast is brought to you by Covenant Eyes. The internet can be a dangerous place for unguarded eyes and hearts. Covenant Eyes provides the services that protect against the evils and temptations that can be found on the World Wide Web. Visit WadoRadio.com slash resources for more information about our affiliate, Covenant Eyes. Everybody lends an ear. I want to thank you in advance for letting us make it clear to y'all. DJ Wado here, of course, with my brother, the soccer. We are backstage at the Sessions Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, my brother? I'm blessed, man. It's First of all, let me say this, bro. Let me say this. I'm cutting you off, but let me say this, bro. Yeah. You support everybody, bro. I love it, man. Uh-huh. Every time there's a show in New York, you there. And I don't even be at all the shows, but every show I go to, <laughs> I see you. I just love, you know what I mean, just the, the unity between me and a lot of the CHH artists. Like, you know, uh, me and my brother Kevin, you know Kevin. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're always constantly out. No matter where we are, status-wise or whatever, we're always front row. At everybody's show, just you know, supporting art we believe in and, and you know what we feel is right. So we're always at all these shows. And even though we're in Jersey right now, like we're we're always front row. You gonna catch me like the next fan right yeah, next going to me. I mean, like going Rapping hard. Rapping the lyrics. Always, always, <laughs> always, always. <laughs> Yo, did you grow up listening to Christian rap? No. I mean, um, my mother gave me one cross movement album, and I can't even remember the name of it to help me. I know it was a, a blue album artwork or something like that. It was blue. So if that helps you out with anything, if you know it, I just remember track eight because what was the song? I I, I can't even remember. Can't remember you know what I mean? Because it was like that was the only rap my mother would let me listen to. Mm. So it's kind of like, mom, can you just? I don't want to listen to the worship. Can you just put on Cross Movement number eight, please, and just put on repeat? You know what I mean? But now for the life of me, I can't remember it. But if I saw the album cover, I don't know. But um. Yeah, man. I didn't really grow up listening to much uh, CHH. I kind of adapted it more and learned more about it um, as I started to grow in the ministry. Sure. So, you know, my boy Chris kind of put me on to, you know, you got to listen to Richie Righteous. You got to yeah. listen to um, uh, Malachi The Truth. Yep. You got to get on. Oh, you think that's cool. You got to listen to Sea Light. You got to listen to Lecrae, The Truth. You got to listen to Ambassador. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is a lot I missed out on. So, you know what I mean? I regret not taking uh, advantage of it while I was young, but... No, now I can actually appreciate it more for what it's actually, you know, grown into now because of that. Yeah. Well, at what point did you did you get saved? Like where where were you where were you at in your life and what was kind of going on with you then, man? Um I've always been in a church. Yeah. Um well, I, I can my, tell that if your mom was giving you cross movements. Oh yeah, bro. listen. <laughs> listen, man. Um my my grandfather was the pastor of a church. Uh, my mother was the worship leader, so yeah. I grew up in church. But my relationship with God didn't take a turn until I was about 18. Sure. At a youth service, and um, I really sat back and thought about everything that He really was able to save me from that I was so unappreciative of, and sitting there like, God, I've I've been so stupid my whole life, not appreciating the blessings and things You've taken me from, and almost being paralyzed from birth and and hip surgeries and ankle surgeries the doctor telling me i'm never going to walk again and and all these things and i kind of just shrugged it off it was like oh, i was one of the lucky ones and i didn't realize that or translate it as blessings man so um 18 i kind of just I, I i was in the middle of a youth service at my church just broke down and just like you know what god let me just rededicate my whole life everything i have to you and um yeah i've heard you share that story before but i wanted to ask you because like my story's similar and there's so many of us that grow up in church but don't have the relationship and i think a lot of times artists ministers it's almost like we forsake that part like we almost think like that's not glamorous because we think man these kids come every week they know the lord but in reality that's not always the case i mean um i mean I, we were fortunate enough to kind of realize it in a certain time of our lives yep. some people don't really get yep. to appreciate the blessings that they had until it's already long gone or you know god forbid anything happens you know um and i think that's why it's so important that we share our testimony to kind of let the next person know that listen no matter where you're in no matter what time you're in there's still a time for you to sit back reflect and think on god's goodness and really turn away from things that you you may have just rejected in regards to god and I think it's super important that we all just recognize where God has taken us from and where God will take us with obedience, you know? When did you start doing music in your life? Um, I started doing music at eight years old. Wow. Um, 
but it wasn't on a you know. Were, when were you I was, rapping or was it? Worship? I was. I, I started off singing. Okay. You know, I started off singing at eight years old, and um, it just being around my mother the whole time, it's just I caught on to it, and just watching a lot of TV. I never really had vocal lessons. I just kind of like emulated. So what your I mom's saw on a worship TV. leader. Yeah, my mom's okay. a worship leader. She was a worship leader for my church for like twenty five years. Wow. And um. You know, I started making, I started singing little songs here and there, but by 14, I picked up rapping. Mm. And um, my first ever song, I'll never forget, it's called Dreams Within, and it was about my uh, niece who had passed away. And, uh, oh, I'm bugging, not my niece, second cousin, I apologize. God, I looked at her like, you know, family like that. But, um, yeah, she had passed away. She was about four months old, and it was like something really struck me hard about that. And I wrote a song about her. And that was the first rap I ever wrote. I listened back to it every now and again. It kind of humbled me. It's like, wow, I came from, you know, terrible setups and, like, flowing, not knowing how to breathe right on the record yeah. to now, like, where I know how to evoke the right emotion sure. whenever I make a record. So it started at 14, really, with the rap side of everything. But, yeah, eight years old, eight years old. Striking that balance of singing, rapping, when, when, like, when, when did you figure out, like, the right balance for you? Um, given that you were doing both so young, yeah. Um, I first I st- I gave everything I had to music like singing when I first started. Right, you know, I started rapping. It was around the time G Unit, Fifty yep. Cent, Kanye, yep. College Dropout. So I totally left singing on the back burner. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna wow. go full with rapping. So you was just hard. You was just bars. Go just trying to just bar everybody out, man. It was crazy. I still remember the first. You still barring everybody out <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> but I was so into trying to find my sound based off everybody else that I left singing alone. But it kind of hit me like around 16, 17, where like I try to find that balance within. Like maybe I'll sing on this hook. Or I'll do a bridge here, but just rap a little bit more. And I got to a point where I can comfortably sing on a record. Maybe a little rap here and there, or I could just rap and a little bit of singing and just try to find a balance depending on the record. You know what I mean? It's interesting for me, man, because I, f- I found out about you as a battle rapper. Then I found out about your music, and it was so different. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the, Very the, different. The first right. few things I was hearing, I was like, this is almost like a whole different person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, um, I've, I've always had a love and appreciation for battle rap since like sure. the sixth grade. Um, I didn't. I never knew how to approach it the right way because um, I thought Christian battle rap. I've never seen it before then. Yeah. So I'm just like, that sounds kind of corny to me. I don't want to become that, you know, shove Jesus down your throat. Yeah. You know, and it just come off corny and people don't receive it. So like, I just had appreciation of it from afar. And when I went to college, I've actually started battle rapping at 21, at um, my freshman year of college. What school? Uh, Five Towns College. Okay. In uh, Long Island. And, uh, you know, it started, uh, ironically, me and my friend Angel, who's also a believer, he loves battle rap. We, we started the league together. And he was like, yo, why don't you rap against somebody? I'm like, nah, I don't, nah, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be Did you there. think of it as a league then? Or was it, was it just kind of? I mean, it was just more so out of love. I just loved, yeah. I just loved the culture. So when we came together to create that, uh, that and now it's a league. Yeah. It's called Bars, Battle, yeah. Another Rapper Showcase. Yeah. And um, at the time, I just wanted to just help put on an event and feel like, yo, I, I feel like I'm a part of the culture now. He's like, why don't you rap? And, uh, you know, I fought with God a little bit about it, praying on it heavy. And, you know, God really put it in my heart and just like, go forth. And I'm like. So okay. a lot of the people you were battle rapping even then weren't Christians. This was yeah, just. Yeah, this, my first battle was against a dude named Dre McFly. Okay. And, um, you know, he's the typical uh, typical street rapper, you know, Gucci, Louie at the time. Everything sure, sure, was sure. popping. And he's just like, <laughs> you know, I got money. I got this, that, your girl, you know what I mean? All that yeah. stuff. So, like, at the time, he was the perfect person I wanted to battle because he stood for everything that I, I, I clashed with spiritually. Yeah. And just, like, everything about his character was something I'm like, nah, some, there's got to be something behind that. And that, you know, it, it started to, it went from writing uh, uh, about him to writing against what's making him, you know, mm. what, what he's hiding behind. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a rap about Dre. Yeah, that's And I'm like, good. nah, I'm a rap about why you have to feel this way because of these that's insecurities good, you hide in. You hide behind that's the good. clothes, the money. I want to get to the core of who you are. And once I seen that that happened, you know, God started to really, you know, implement these things into my raps. Like, yo, this is bigger than just breaking down your yeah. opponent. It's getting to that the core of who they are and building them up in Christ again. You know what I mean? So it's funny, man. I, you know, every time I've talked to you, Loso, I've, I haven't met A Ward yet, but even Street Hems, you guys always say, "Yo, we we attack the worldview, right?" And I feel like just hearing you share that story, it, it's it's like, I mean, you're a pioneer. 
You know what I mean? Like you, you know that's, that. That's like, that's big coming from you. No, man. but you know that. Like you, you real. Like that's, in, in that, that space, you are absolutely a pioneer. And I feel like if you didn't go through that process, like early on, right. that whole attacking the world view, that to me, that's what made it a thing for Christians to be able to. I mean, I'm not saying like I know like tunnel rats and cross movement, like they, of course, like they'll tell you like, yo, we was we was doing battle raps back then and, and something. But it's different now because you got the YouTube angle and yeah. you know it's 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 th- recorded. It's these are events. Even with because I don't want to disregard anybody else who's sure. doing this before. I think sure. they have uh, Mr. Biscuit, Isaac Knox. Yeah. Uh, th- I, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. 3D PF. And um, these dudes were believers yep. in battle rap. Yep. I think what the difference was is how unashamed we were now in this generation, yeah. how we proclaim Christ yeah. on the stage. Back then, they were more so like, I'm Christian, so I'm not going to curse. Yep. Or I'm Christian, yep. so I'm not going to do this. Like me, Loso, A Ward Street, we took that aside. We're like, no, we want to get to the root of the ministry. Yeah, like bro. we're here proclaiming Christ and what we do in a room full of thousands that may not agree. But that's where we ruffle some feathers in regards to like, listen, you may not agree with it, but understand where I'm coming from and we can have the conversation. And I feel like that's what really set a trend of like the whole Christian hip hop, you know, Christian battle rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, you know, I thank God for that because it wasn't an easy process of walking into that ministry. Like sometimes I wanted to give up and like I don't want to be known as a battle rapper because they're not known for good music. They're not known for this. <laughs> and I don't want and I feel like even before I stepped into battle rap, I had pretty decent music that I want yeah. people to listen to. And um, like you said, you heard about the battle rap before yeah. you understood the music. Yep. And the music's been in my heart for years before battle rap was even in the frame. And uh, I don't want people to disregard that. But slowly but surely, people are starting to pick up like, wow, Loso can actually make music. Street yep. Hymns is making yep. music. A-Ward, yep. Saga, you yep. know, like things are starting to pick up like, okay, this is more than just battle rap now. These yep. dudes actually came here to do some, some good things in regards to just preaching the gospel, whether it's in music or battle rap or even when you meet us in person. You know what I mean? It's a... It's, uh, it's it's really ministry all the way through. So let, let's let's keep going through your career. So you had the, the the league that you started, bars. Was there another stop before URL? Yes. Um I had about three battles in bars. Okay. Uh Dre McFly, Devin Lake, and Alonzo Green. And after that, I battled Alonzo Green. He had a battle at another league called Battle Rap Arena. Okay. And his battle recently dropped and he tagged the league owner. And he tagged me in the comment like, "Yo, you gotta have Saga come through." Wow, and I'm like, "That's respect, right yeah, there, though." Yeah, that's and respect, bro. Like, y'all gotta have Saga, right? And at the time, they did you definitively win these battles? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. I mean, I mean, so they had uh, a judging system back then with the crowd based off the crowd, you, yeah. you know, the whole thing. But um, I feel like even if you watch it back, you'll be able to see who who won the battle. But um, you know, he had a respect enough for me to be like, he tagged the league on it, like you have to invite Saga. That's dope. And it was like. Uh, league owner was like, I don't know, the Christian guy. Um, we'll give him one round to see what he can do. And that that battle was against Nautic the Boss, and that was the battle that uh, that Norbs, who was like the the A and R for Smack, and um, he was there for it. And that's the that battle that caught wind on Rapzilla when it first uh, yep. caught on. And that was the battle that literally changed everything because Norbs went back and told Smack, and I'm like, Yo, this dude right here. This dude is a real deal. He's Christian, but give him a shot. You know, gave him my PG battle against Black Mugger the same year. And from there, I went to BET the same year. So I went from battling College League, Battle Rap Arena, URL, 106 and Park in the same year. And just to see how fast God was able to elevate things once I stood out of my own self and just like, you know what? I'm going to trust you, even though I don't feel good about this decision. And it was like, yo, listen, the the obedience is what I asked for. And I'm going to show you what you can do with this. And... That's where it all started from there. So it, it was it was it was never that's when it kind of became okay, this could be like a real career for me. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know a lot of battle rappers who can eat comfortably <laughs> playing the record. It's cool. Um but yeah, no, it was like, you know, a lot of people can eat comfortably off battle rap. They can make a living off of battle rap. And the goal wasn't for me to make a living. Like even when you ask Loso Street Hymns, everybody that when we first came together, um, I told them off the rip, like, God placed it in my heart to not really be here for a long uh, season of my life. You know what I mean? The the goal is to kick the door open and allow others to just flood the scene and just kind of fall back and get back to whatever God called me. Because I don't want to get too comfortable in something that God's called me to do that I don't hear him calling me anymore. Yeah. So if I get so comfortable in battle rap, and God's like, yeah, you got to let that go. Your, your next thing is to evangelize elsewhere. I'm like, nah, but God, I, I got to battle with so-and-so next month. I so how much, how much longer do you think you got, bro? 
Um, if I could put a number on it, I'd I, I'd say maybe another three years. Wow. If anything, um, you know that's I a think, long time in battle rap, though. Bro. Oh yeah, I mean that's, it, a, that's, that's depending on how active you are, yeah. that could that could last that's you a I'm long saying. time. Yeah. But I feel like there's a few more things that need to be done. What up, bro? Um, a few more things that need to be done. Um, but other than that, I feel like the impact is still there. You know, you yeah. see it in Loso, you see it in the Street Hams A Ward. To be able to build with those brothers and um, and see how it's it's crazy. Cause I feel like uh, Loso actually mentioned it in an interview from before. Like we all came around the same time, and none of us are whack. It's yeah. kind of like so yep. we're not like oh he's okay, yep. but it, like yep. we we'll all have our own respective impact no matter where we are. And I feel like that's that's not a mistake. I feel like God knew what He was doing. You know, with me then Loso right at I believe it was me then Street Hymns, then Loso then A Ward. Um, but. It's just amazing to see how God works in that. Yeah, bro. Um, talk about some. I mean, without, I, I don't want you to put people's names right. necessarily, right. but just some of the conversations that you've been able to have oh, man. behind the scenes. Um, I mean, if you want to put names, no, no, you, can, course, but no. I, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm no, of course, of course. About that. I mean, um, one thing I will say is I want to say shout out to O Red if he's watching, um, because after my battle with Tink the Demon. Um, I was chilling on the side of the stage right before he battled and you know, he's like yo saga like I want you to pray for me Wow, I'm just like ah, I get it. I'm just like all right the Christian guy. You want me to pray? All right, you know, he was he's serious. He's like no, I'm, I'm, I'm really serious, bro Like I want you to pray for me. I was like and he, what, what what do you want to give up to God right now? You know, what I mean? he's like I just want to make sure I get through my material honestly, you know, what I mean just wow. make sure that so, you know me and him we prayed to the corner of the stage while somebody else is still battling we're in the corner It's like God I just pray that you know, um, you just have your way in him, or just beyond battle rap. I'm kind of yeah. he wanted prayer for the battle, but I'm making sure that in, like to sow a seed that Absolutely. you know leaves battle rap. You know, and um, he appreciated it so much, man. It's like there's been a better relationship since, and little moments like that where you know first you battle somebody, you there's a lot of tension because you don't know them, but after that wall is broken down, when you battle, there's so much of a conversation that can be had. Like when I battled uh, Chess, the same day his friend died, and um, it's a lot of hate and you know, a lot of hurt um, and, and frustration in his eyes while he's rapping to me. And once I realized that, it brought me back to when I battled uh, prep and I lost my brother Tay. I lost my sister to Neil the month of the battle. And there was like a lot of hurt behind it. So when I reached out to him after the battle, it was a better connection, a better relationship. Like, listen, I know what you're going through, man, but you got to lean on God for that peace and that, that comfort that surpasses all your understandings in the situation. You got to just lean on God and everything. And... I can say that to him in a battle. These are things, I'm not trying to hear it, I'm trying to rap. But when you actually just put the bars aside, the cameras are off, and you're actually able to have that conversation, that's what matters the most, you know? Yeah, that's good, man. I, I think, what, you know, one of the things I believe what you guys are doing is almost modeling for other believers. Right. How they how they can go into other places. Right. Maybe it's not, it's not battle rap, but it's your work, your school, I a agree. club, a bar, or whatever. And still be a light in those spaces. I mean, when you think about battle rap, you're talking about, you know, on a on a on a small smack event, we're talking about 1,500 people. All right, bro. And um, to be in the midst of, you know, uh, weed, liquor, women, all these things, right? A normal Christian would look at that and be like, I don't want to step foot into that because I don't want to be tempted. But like the idea that we we've adapted because of that is wrong because those are the places we should be. Those are the places that we need to evangelize to because. Those are the, we're the only chance of church that they'll see. We're the only representation of Christ because they may have had church hurt in the past, and they don't want to. Oh wow, you you rap, okay? Oh you you dress like I dress. All oh, these dudes, these pastors back in the day, they used to look at me fun. Like, okay, that was a wrong representation of what God can actually do. I'm here to let you know I dress like you, I talk like you, and I'm here to tell you that God can change. He can literally change your life, and it sounds cliche to people when they hear that first. But when they hear about things of, of suicidal thoughts and addiction to pornography, which people have clowned me for before, but people really deal with addictions. People deal with these hurts and uh, suicidal thoughts, depression, uh, addiction to pornography, all these things. And they, they, they're so scared to you know express what they've been through. And I'm just so unashamed of my story because I wear those like I wear those like badges of honor because I know where God took me from. And they see that and you're like. So what time your church service start? What, right. what time? You right. Know? Like it's it's amazing to see what God can do when you're just able to just not be afraid of what you've been through in order to impact somebody else who's going through that, you know? So 
pornography was definitely a thing for me too. How did you get through that? It's all about accountability. Yeah, um, bro. Yep. You can't do this by yourself. Yep. Even Christ recognized he couldn't do it by himself. Yep. He had he he needed people. So if Christ needed people around him, what makes you us think that we're any better? You know what I mean? Like I've had great brothers around me. Um, my brother Kevin, brother Eli, um, everybody else in my life that I kind of just leaned on, and and kind of kept me you know going. Um, it's been amazing. You know, just kind of just like realizing. If I feel any urge to, you know, act out or just, you know, anything like that, it's kind of just like, all right, you know what, let me call my bro. Yo, what's going on, man? I need you to pray for me because I'm, I'm going through it right now. Or even when it came to uh, suicidal thoughts or drinking and things like that, you call up somebody like, bro, I need you to pray for me because my flesh is saying one thing, but my spirit is saying another. I just need that, 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 that affirmation that God is trying to just pull me away from that. And, and that's what matters. You cannot do it by yourself. A, a, a good community is, is always important. Yeah, we actually... Um we, we actually, one of our affiliates is Covenant Eyes. And for those of you that don't know, Covenant Eyes is basically uh, a program with built-in accountability. Right. So it monitors your web browser history. That's, um, that's beautiful right It actually right there. blocks different websites right. from you. So if you're watching this and you're struggling with pornography, try Covenant Eyes. If you use my affiliate code, you get a month free. It's awesome. Wado Radio. That's awesome. Um, that's great. And so, yeah, man, I, I like, I, I think... This is this, this is one thing, and this is why I wanted to ask you about it because addiction is one of those things that the devil wants to isolate you. Right. He doesn't like like when you pull people in and you got accountability. Now it's not just you; right. it's the Lord. It's your it's your it's your peoples. Y'all off y'all all in this together. That's a but fact. when you're isolated, that's when he came for Jesus. Oh, man. When Jesus was isolated, the moments when you're alone. With your thoughts, the moment that that you're alone and, and you allow any whisper of doubt into your spirit is the moment that the devil could just like, oh, got him. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Right. You know you want to do this right quick. You know you want to smoke a cigarette real right. quick. You know you want to whatever it is. And it's like those moments where you're isolated. That's when you need to like you need to to seek that. Whether it's from the Father Himself, whether you're praying, or whether you know you're spiritually weak and you need to go to somebody who can keep you on track. And I thank God for the community that I had around me. You know, it's, it's it's no joke, you know, being by yourself and, and feeling the, the the feeling and thought of, of feeling alone. You know what I mean? It, it can do a lot to you. Um, You know, I asked Loso that she was in the room when I did. Um, Are you guys going to do this battle rap tour? Yes. <laughs> um, Bless you. Um, Me, Loso, Street, A-Ward, we've been planning this out for quite a while. And um, we're just trying to figure out the right, the right ways of going about it. But the idea behind it. I got something it. for you off camera. Oh, awesome! I got something for you. But just going about it the right way, um, you know, uh, just trying to figure out the right format because yep. I feel like it's never, it hasn't been done to this uh, to this extent with battle rap and trying to incorporate you know breakdowns and having yep. sit down panels with the people and answering questions and things that matter and um, beyond battle rap to show people it's not about us just going to these leagues and spitting bars we want to come to our community as well to show y'all why y'all should support brothers of ourselves yep. you know what i mean like and just really making it happen so it's definitely in the works and um you know god willing we get that done as soon as possible yeah that's good bro that's good what's next for you musically on the on the music front man oh man uh new project and even on the battle front oh man uh new battle new battle in december um i'm waiting for the trailer to drop on that so um it's definitely it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be amazing. I'm gonna have fun with that. But uh, on a music front, got a new project working on it called AOL, and uh, it's an acronym for As of Late. Okay. But it's synonymous with the America Online theme. When you hear the project, you'll understand. Like I'm taking you through aspects of my life, um, good, bad, relationship uh, issues, uh, trust issues. Um, you know, my walk with God, so many things. And I feel like this is is a big step from my last project, Loner. I dropped four years ago. And I've really sat with this project and really wanted to make it uh, perfect. So AOL is the next move. Um, and we're looking to drop that early 2018. Dropping singles uh, within within this year. And, you know, we're dropping freestyles. And I got a, a freestyle dropping really soon, my brother Proof. And um, it's just really, I want to get, you know, back to the music groove again. With this time, I took a little I took a little break from battle rap to kind of focus on the music and and. Now I'm ready to start, you know, releasing these things that God gave to me, you know. It's, so I'm really excited about it. It's dope, man. Bro, I'm sincerely happy for everything that's happening for you. Uh, man, I feel like it you, couldn't man. happen to a better person, bro. Thank you, man. This uh, is big coming from you, man, because, like, you know, to think about um, watching 
interviews with you and, and Kristen and you and Angie and his son and you know to be able to share these experiences with you the, the freestyle that we did at the Jaw Rogers Studios yeah. man it's like everything it's, it's humbling to you know share these moments with somebody I've, I've respected and I appreciate that bro um, I think like I said man your spirit like it's rare that you see artists going to other artist shows consistently yeah. like and it's everybody bro everybody everybody, everybody. bro my brother's Gennaro music and, and community. Everybody, everybody here is like all family. Aaron, Garage, Cannon, everybody. It's like it's all family. So whenever they're in the area and I can make it happen, I'm out there. You know what I mean? Good, anytime, man. anytime. That's good, man. Love you, bro. Love you too, man. Show. Thanks for tuning in to another Wado Radio full interview. This was made possible in part by our affiliate Covenant Eyes. The internet can be a dangerous place for unguarded eyes and hearts. Covenant Eyes provides the services that protect against the evils and temptations that can be found on the World Wide Web. Established over a decade ago, Covenant Eyes is the pioneer in internet accountability software, empowering its members to maintain their online integrity. I personally use them on every device that I have. Computer, iPhone, iPad, whole nine yards. Don't go another day without guarding your eyes, your mind, and your heart. Visit waitoradio.com slash resources for more information about Covenant Eyes. And if you sign up via our affiliate link at waitoradio.com slash resources, we'll give you a month free. Covenant Eyes, trusted by thousands of families, including mine. This interview was brought to you by our sponsor, Devin Turner. This MC and pastor is not only putting out great music, but he's doing phenomenal work in his community and abroad. Check out his new album, Luminary, available on all digital outlets. For more info, visit his website at devinturner.org. Thank you for downloading the Wado Radio Podcast. If you love what you're hearing, leave a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear your feedback, and it helps expose others to the show. Thank you, and God bless.